Luke opens our gospel today by telling us that Jesus is a guest at a dinner party. Now, we all know that important things can happen when people gather for dinner. Talking with each other around the table provides a forum for friends and families to catch up on the events in their lives, the lives of each other. At the dinner table, we treat our children, teach our children manners. When, as a child, we take our place at the family dinner table, we are told what is expected of us. We learn the family secrets that are to be shared with no one else outside of our circle. Table conversation has a long history laden with religious, social, and psychological meaning. At the table, we hear the stories that bind us together as a family, as a community, even as a nation. The dinner party at the house of the Pharisees takes place on the Sabbath. Jewish law developed 270 different regulations for keeping the Sabbath day. To the Pharisee, these rules were essential. None of them could be omitted or performed half-heartedly because of their Jewish identity as the chosen people of God was bound up in keeping these Sabbath rules. The Pharisees heard about Jesus' reputation as a healer and a preacher, but they were not sure about his devotion to the law. So they invited him to this dinner to see if he was a righteous Jew like them. They needed to know, is he one of us? If Jesus did anything to degrade the purity of their religious practice, then they had a duty to stop him. Now, despite the obvious tension between the Pharisees and Jesus, the dinner seems to progress quietly. There was probably polite dinner conversation, some concerns about the newest taxes imposed by the Romans. Everyone seems to be behaving according to acceptable community standards. Everything seems to be the way it should be. Then Jesus brings up the issue of the order of seating at the table. He talks about how embarrassing it is to take one of the preferred seats at the table only to have a more important person come along and bump you into a less prestigious seat. There is a sudden silence as everyone at the table looks at each other, like children who are caught with their hands in the cookie jar. What does he mean? What is he talking about? I am an important person. I deserve to be here. I give alms to the temple. I follow all the laws. Who could be more important than me? Then Jesus goes even further. He launches into a discourse about who should be invited to this dinner party. Don't just invite your relatives, business associates, and rich friends, he tells them because all of those people will turn around and invite you to their next party. Instead of calculated reciprocity, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, because they cannot repay you, and you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Now this was outrageous to the Pharisees, who would never dine with those they considered unclean. They would have to put aside the law that protects their status as the chosen people of God. They would be like everybody else. No one would take them seriously. No one would respect their position in the community. They would have argued with Jesus, saying, when we keep the religious law, God is pleased with us, and he blesses us, so that the world around us will know that we are the chosen people of God. Well, Jesus took his relationship to God very seriously, but it did not hinge upon observing all of these minute rules and regulations of the law. Jesus also understood that the Jews had a special relationship to God. He knows that they are the chosen people, just as the scripture said. However, Jesus also insists that God has a special relationship with all of his children. We are all part of God's family. Our identity, our righteousness, comes from not observing the law, but from loving one another. To be faithful to God, says Jesus, you must make helping the poor and the sick a greater priority 
than maintaining your place of importance at a dinner party. To be successful in life, you do not have to try and sneak your name tag a little higher up the table. Your value as a person does not rely on having your name in the social register. You do not have to be seen, admired, or honored as one who follows the law to be important in the eyes of God. You are already born a child of God. You belong to the family of God, and you cannot improve upon that social standing. True success hinges on the ability to see others as members of your family. What gives our lives true meaning is developing loving relationships with God's people and including them, no matter what their circumstances of life are, in our little corner of God's world. So, my friends, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the lost, and the lonely to your table. Offer them nourishment by sharing with them your food, your intellect, your compassion. They are members of your family. Remember as we gather around this table of the Lord that wonderful things can happen when we invite Jesus to dine with us at this table. And the wonderful things will happen when we invite all those lost, poor, and helpless members of God's extended family to share this Eucharist with us. Let us now join our prayers together and ask God to help us to let go of everything that keeps us from following Jesus. That we may be open to the presence of Christ at our table. May the Eucharist we share help us to reach out to others in understanding and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ will help us to be good witnesses of the gospel by inviting others less fortunate to share in the riches we have received. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear That Christ will continue to open the eyes of his people and show us that when we exclude others from our table, we perpetuate the hatred, prejudice, and discrimination in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear that Christ may send his spirit to all those in our television community so that they may know they have a place here with us at this table of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all the faithful departed may share the heavenly banquet table with God and all the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty Father, help us to speak to the needs of others. May our desire to be one with them in loving you Make us worthy of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.